Well, I think the main thing we want to talk about with hybrid arch aneurysms, our surgery, is that it's evo- it's an evolution. And second of all, I want to say I love Swanson and Clark. <laughs> so um, it's, it's up here. <laughs> so the hybrid arch procedure is really about the uh, the concept of, uh, and it's this is all an evolution. The concept of uh, when you have an arch aneurysm, can we apply uh, t- uh, endovascular technology to uh, assist? Uh, and land in zone zero uh, for uh, f- for the uh, TVAR procedure. So another title for these talks is Have Hybrid Procedures Replaced Open Aortic Arch Reconstruction? Is an- and the answer is absolutely not. Uh, and is really, uh, this is a very uh, uh, niche uh, kind of area. What we really are treating with with these uh, types of concepts is really not a procedure as much as a concept that... Uh, when we have these mid to distal arch aneurysms like these, um, this is an operation that is traditionally very difficult uh, to uh, do, uh, either from a left chest or from a uh, sternotomy, uh, and maybe we can come up with a better solution uh, utilizing uh, uh, an approach that includes both open surgery as well as endovascular surgery. And you can see these examples uh, here. Uh, and here's another example of a very complex distal arch aneurysm. Um, and uh, there's not any, uh, uh, to, to do this case open from the front would be almost impossible except as a two-stage operation. Uh, and um, to do this from the left chest would be also very difficult. There's not really any clamps out here. It's a left chest. It would be a left uh, chest uh, reverse hemi-arch um, circuitory arrest case. So these are the, this is where the, uh, where, where we kind of blend into going, kind of making a decision coming in from an open case from a left chest or from the, from the sternotomy is where these operations are most uh, appropriate. So really it's uh, all about the landing zones. We're not going to talk about zone two or zone one uh, in, these, uh, in this uh, discussion, although that is, uh, I suppose, a, a hybrid procedure in the tr- true sense of the word. But really what we're talking about here is, uh, is, is this. So this is a saccular aneurysm or some sort of mid to distal arch aneurysm. We, we use the word type, type 1. This is the classic debranching operation, and this is an area where we have a, very, we have a good proximal landing zone in the ascending aorta in zone 0 and a good, proximal, good distal landing zone in zone 3 or 4 uh, of the descending aorta. So this is uh, where we, have, we don't really necessarily need to do any um, uh, open operation except for debranching. This is, again, defined as good proximal distal landing zones uh, in, the zone, in those zones. Now, the type 2 really is an area where the ascending aorta is not appropriate for, uh, for putting a, a T-VAR into. It's, it's, a, it's, it's not a good landing zone. So we have to construct a Dacron landing zone through an open operation. Uh, and, uh, and this is becoming my favorite or most, most people's favorite at this point. But also, uh, we, have to, uh, we, have a very, we have a reasonable distal landing zone. So this is no proximal landing zone, but uh, a reasonable distal landing zone. And this is the classic debran- These t- two and three are the classic debranching hybrid procedures that we talk about uh, uh, mostly. Now, number four really is not a, deb- not a hybrid procedure in, in the classic sense. What this really is is, a, is a, it's just a, a proximal operation that we all do. Uh, and then to uh, do a T-VAR docking uh, later on with either an elephant trunk or a uh, classic zone three arch. And it's not really a debranching procedure, it's an orthotopic, it's really an orthotopic uh, reconstruction of the aorta. aorta. And this is kind of what we're talking about here. This is actually not a classic debranching operation, these kinds of procedures. And this is is a a frozen elephant trunk. So what we are talking about, here's, a, here's the type 1, the picture, um, where we're going to just take, a, in this case, a, 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 a graft off. We can either use a two-branch graft or a three-branch graft, um, as you can see here. Or uh, we'll take a, a, a type 2, which is to, to lock in under just a straight cross clamp, a ascending order graft. This is our uh, new uh, uh, proximal landing zone, and do a, a classic uh, type 2 debranching. And this is really not a debranching procedure. We can come in anti-grade or retrograde with a T-bar. So why do we want to do an arch hybrid instead of a classic zone three open arch? Well, uh, because uh, the classic open procedure f- uh, for the distal arch proximal descending component repair solution is actually is a bit morbid. Uh, and uh, there's a fairly high CVA risk. If you look at the classic repairs of uh, sac- saccular and atherosclerotic aneurysms of the mid and distal arch, whether you're coming in from the left chest or from the front, these have very significant neurological uh, uh, problems. Um, 
uh, recurrent nerve and respiratory risk and even uh, phrenic nerve issues if you're going down deep into zone three and zone four um, from a technical standpoint is, is, an, is, a, is, is a problem. And even uh, Shrestha, who's going to be Malik, who's going to be talking in the future uh, in the next one, is when you look at these, these deep frozen elephant trunks into zone three by almost every surgeon in the world, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a, there's a bit of a problem with it. Bleeding at the deep posterior suture line is a disaster. This particular procedure eliminates hypothermic circuitry arrest or any kind of antigrade cerebral perfusion or retrograde cerebral perfusion completely uh, and, uh, and eliminates advanced circulation management concepts completely. And often, if for the type 1s anyway, it eliminates cardiopulmonary bypass entirely. And this, of course, eliminates the second stage mortality interval death rate, which we all know is, is, is important. It's not because of the proximal ascending component, which we are very, very good at. So um, let's take a look at the uh, type uh, 1 operation. So this is a, a, type, a type 1 operation. We can do these off bypass uh, or on bypass. Um, if I do them off bypass, it's very straightforward. If you do them on bypass, it's easily a 25 uh, or 20 minute uh, uh, pump run. Uh, and it's just a, a, a way to, to uh, make the proximal anastomosis a little bit easier, and a little bit more uh, uh, safe, and also maybe go down to a little bit of 32 degrees or so to help out with some issues regarding the brain. So the, so the classic type 1 can be done off pump or uh, on, on pump. And so this is an off-pump uh, uh, result, and you can see the, the result here of a, of a, of a, of a, of a hybrid uh, type 1 and the end, end result and the very, very proximal placement of the debranching uh, grafts. Now, one of the reasons why we do these on cardiopulmonary bypass when we do these, which we don't do very many of these anymore, is because of stroke modulation. Uh, and what we can see here, looking at the cerebral oximetry, is not everybody, uh, you can clamp these, these vessels and, and have a, a good result. If you take a look at the cerebral oximetry, which is, in fact, uh, something that I do in every arch case, no matter what kind of case it is, uh, you can see that as soon as you clamp the innominate, and many, some people, not everybody, but you can see dramatic uh, uh, changes in cerebral oximetry uh, of the right and left uh, hemispheres um, uh, in, in certain segment, sub-segment of patients. So we can modify that a little bit with a pump run. Um, the, uh, this is an anti-grade graft that we use. Uh, in this particular case, we cut off the uh, ascending aorta part of it and then just come in with the, uh, either a two-branch or three-branch graft with an anti-grade uh, access delivery arm for these, uh, for these hybrid procedures. This is a pre-made pre -made graft with a large anominate 12-millimeter uh, 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 graft, 16-millimeter inflow. So also for, for pump, to put them on the pump, we can do coronary bypasses or even AVRs or other things that also occasionally need to be done. In this particular case, you can see we did this one, well, put an aortic valve in as well uh, and uh, did a, uh, uh, an arch hybrid for a very large distal arch aneurysm uh, at the same time with an anti-grade delivery uh, of the uh, stent graft after placement of the, uh, uh, of the uh, uh, AVR. Now, these are all done in, our, in, in, in endo, endovascular suites. And I, for the entire revolution that's going to be coming in aortic surgery, uh, every, every cardiac surgical uh, system needs to have a very advanced uh, uh, hybrid operating room endo suite. Um, I just uh, was at Mayo Clinic and saw uh, their most recent one, and I, we have a, one as well. It's just a, some of these things. These, the new GEs, for example, are incredible, uh, just incredible. Uh, which, which what we can do with them is for endovascular uh, TAAAs and endovascular arches that are coming down the pike. Uh, these are going to be very, very important. In fact, they can't be done. So we're going to lose out. We're not going to be able to do this stuff unless you have one. It's that simple. So ascending aortic aneurysm in mild. Uh, this is an example of a case, for example, that has a large ascending aorta. So we're not going to be able to land a stent graft into, into this zone zero. So this gets into the concept of the type 2 um, uh, uh, hybrid concept. So if we have something like this, we're going to have to create a new landing zone. Many of us who started doing these early on, back in 05 and 06, uh, realized very early on that we cannot be placing stent grafts in a zone zero uh, in aortas that are, uh, that are dilated. Uh, they have to be normal. So 37 millimeters is my, is my limit. Uh, and so that's a lot of aortas. Most of the patients that have these kind of problems uh, are going to have a, an aorta that's bigger than 37 millimeters. This is the fundamental boogaboo, so to speak, or the fundamental uh, uh, thing that's going to that's retard 
uh, the placement of, of completely endograft solutions for the aortic arch uh, is, is the fact that we have retrograde type A dissections and type 1A endoleaks in this, in this area, which we're going to get into. So this is the idea of locking in an ascending aortic uh, Dacron landing zone in, in zone zero. It's a very elegant uh, procedure uh, c compared to number one. It does require a quick pump run, though, to do this. Uh, but everything is uh, very, very simple uh, after that, and you have no problems with the landing zone at zone zero, and this is what it looks like. Now, more recently, we've kind of taken this uh, operation and made it a little bit more uh, slick uh, by making it a two-branch arch uh, and uh, using the Gore hybrid grafts in the left carotid to make this. Uh, this takes about uh, 30 seconds uh, and makes everything very, very uh, easy. So what is the data for some of, th for some of these things? Oops. So the first uh, one that I want to go through, there's a number of studies, but this is just one I thought was very interesting. This is a, uh, a review that's a couple years old now, uh, looking at 195 patients with hybrid arches, and they had a 9% preoperative mortality rate, a 7% CVA rate, uh, and a 0.5% uh, a a paraplegia risk. So this, this was a, a little bit worrisome. Now, of these cases, uh, two-thirds were zone zero hybrids. And this, as you, can, as you know, is from the vascular literature. Uh, but here's the, here's the kicker, uh, is that 10.5% of these patients had endograft complications at the ascending aorta with endoleaks, uh, type 1A uh, migration, and retrograde type aortic dissections. So this, is, this was in the era of, of, uh, of the standard type 1 uh, debranching procedure. And most people have now gotten away from this. We still have some of the vascular surgeons doing this, but this is, this is not a good, really not a good operation. Here's an example of, of one of our cases where we had a, re a perforation and retrograde dissection of, an, of the aortic arch. Most people uh, who do, or were still doing these, uh, were going to type 2 hybrid procedures. This is a, a, a paper from Calgary, uh, 20 patients, uh, all classic type 2 uh, hybrids, and they had a 5% preoperative mortality rate. Uh, that one death was due to acute type A dissection and not a classic uh, elective case. The mean euro score in these patients, this is just says, well, what, what patients are we doing? Well, we're doing very sick patients. This our mean euro score, too, was, was 29.5. This is diffuse atheromatous disease in almost all patients except for the type A dissection cases. 40% of these cases had previous CVA or carotid endoterectomy, and there was a 5% new CVA rate and zero paraplegia rate for this particular uh, uh, operation, which probably is re reasonable results in this patient population. And note, there is zero type 1A endoleaks and zero retrograde type A dissections. Why? Because you have a graft in the ascending order, so it's very, quite safe. These results are uh, much better than uh, type 1, endo type one uh, hybrid repairs in the, that, are, that are usually in the vascular literature. So we actually looked at uh, some cases, and I really wanted to put this in here to show you how uh, uh, kind of limited this, uh, this, uh, this problem is. When we looked at our entire arch procedure, this is just for uh, nine years here, uh, and we, looked, we, we took out the, the conventional arches and, and all of the, uh, uh, the type 8 dissections, we found that really when you want to look at the, the, uh, the uh, application of a, of a hybrid arch operation, uh, it was only about 3% of all of the cases that we did on the arch. And, and, and the University of Michigan came out with their data was only 2%. So isolated, pure isolated uh, arch operations with normal landing zones or relatively normal landing zones in zone zero and zone three are, are rare. It's a small part of what we do. So this is not really uh, uh, something that's going to take over aortic arch surgery. So the open elective total arch generalization was only 45 uh, patients in the study cohort that, had, uh, that were uh, out of the whole entire group. And this is basically a, a couple snapshots of all the different kind of cases. They're all these, these saccular aneurysms and really bad atherosclerotic aneurysms of the, of the mid and distal aortic arch. So uh, what, is, what operation is the zone zero hybrid arch replacing? Well, what's really replacing is this operation. This is a, a very old slide because I, do, I don't really uh, do this, this operation that much anymore of, a, uh, of a, basically a conventional uh, three-branch arch with a... Uh, a large saccular aneurysm right here uh, going deep into the chest, really into zone four here almost, uh, uh, with an elephant trunk operation. Uh, and so this is uh, the, uh, the operation that this, 
that this procedure has taken over. The other one is this operation, which is really high saccular, bad arch aneurysms up in the, in the uh, distal arch, coming in from the left chest, circa arrest, um, lots of stroke rates because of uh, these are uh, uh, atherosclerotic aneurysms. These are nasty cases. You can see we're way up in the zone two here. Here's a subclavian bypass. And this is what we used to do through the left chest uh, in these cases, which we basically never do anymore because we would do a hybrid uh, arch procedure in all these cases. So in our series, the hybrids were 10 years older than, these open, than, the, than, the, uh, than the open cases. The hybrids were, had more COPDs. In other words, they're a sicker group. More previous AAA, which is a marker for atherosclerotic disease, and more uh, atherosclerotic or saccular aneurysms. <clears throat> and the results were, were reasonably good compared to the open cases and the hybrid cases. Uh, we had 7% compared to 16% mortality, uh, in-hospital mortality rate. We did have a couple of paraplegias, but that was very early in our series, and we, don't have any para we haven't had any paraplegias recently. Uh, and we found out that it was especially good in the really old people with high Euro 2 scores. So this was our late mortality for the entire group of type 1s and type 2s. We've abandoned type 1s for the most part and used mostly type uh, 2s uh, uh, for all the reasons I mentioned. Uh, regarding proximal uh, aortic complications. Uh, and um, uh, when we look at our type 2s and our type 1s, the results are very much, uh, very improved with the type 2, the type 2 results are much better. Uh, and we also uh, have a, had a learning curve. We got a lot better the last, the last half compared to the first half of the series. But really, um, there's a couple of tricks. Uh, proper selection of patients. I never go, uh, 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 I never do a type 1 in any, Aorta more than 37, uh, cent, uh, 37 millimeters. We, we usually perform a type 2 with an ascending graft, as I talked about. Um, this reduces left subclavian artery problems and retrograde type A dissection and type 1A endoleaks. Think about the left subclavian artery bypass. Sometimes we've been using, well, we've been using these, these rapid, rapid anastomotic techniques for this because it's a pain in the neck. Uh, and uh, we usually mark the most proximal extent so that the secondary operation is a lot easier. So really, the most important thing is I have a couple more slides I want to talk about how we've evolved, is the availability of the hybrid procedures has really radically changed the way we think about procedures. So that in the old days, whenever we came and saw a patient in our clinic for, with an arch aneurysm, you know, we were thinking only in one, in one direction, which was an open operation. Now we kind of think, well, how creative can we get to take it to utilizing a TVAR plus open procedures in many different ways? And it's really a whole different way to think about, about uh, aortic surgery in general. So what is the evolution and the, and the reality, really? Well, we started doing hybrid arch procedures uh, in the classical form in 2006 for a sm small segment of our complex aneurysm cases. But since then, things have evolved substantially. We have the frozen elephant trunks available, uh, Thoroflex, for example, or Avita. We have single and double-branched arch TVARs have become somewhat available uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, early feasibility trials or off the shelf. Uh, and the zone two arch, and uh, even the zone one arch, has, 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 has an operation that's really gaining a lot of traction uh, and has become quite ubiquitous. So the result is that we are performing fewer classic hybrids and more of the above, especially zone two arches, and we're doing a lot of zone two arches at this point in our evolution. And this is an example of a zone three arch with a, with a, with a Chinese, kind of Chinese type of uh, uh, Thoroflex. Um, but what we're doing now for almost all of our type A dissections who have a 10 uh, year life expectancy uh, is this operation. We're going to routine zone two arches, creation of a, of a small two to three centimeter platform, um, very straightforward operation, and then we're docking in with either the Gore uh, or the Mona Lisa uh, single branched uh, graft at maybe two to six weeks later um, to completely uh, take care of, of the aortic arch for dissections, for example, and, and deal with the downstream uh, aorta at the same time. It's, it's, it's a completely elegant solution uh, to the type A dissection paradigm. <clears throat> and frankly, I think when these graphs are going to become available, uh, ubiquitously we're going to probably change the way we do these operations. And this is one of the few times in my life where I've actually changed an operation and changed approach to a, to a disease process based on the availability of a, of a device which is, uh, that doesn't happen very often. Uh, and uh, uh, this is an example of one that we just did, and I'll show you that um, we uh, put the, we did this uh, two weeks beforehand or so, uh, the, uh, standard, the, the standard zone two arch operation, uh, and um, you can see that this was, a, this was a bad case because even only in 14 days, it's already shown to be this big, uh, this big descending uh, aneurysm already only in two weeks. And so uh, we uh, put in the uh, branch graft 
um, uh, into the, uh, you can see the wire in the subclaving here, and, the, and this is the new branch grafts that are coming out uh, for um, uh, aortic arch work. And I'm telling you, these things are going to revolutionize the way we do business. And also, of course, there's a total endovascular arch procedure. Uh, and um, these are, uh, this is a Cook device uh, and uh, with a nominate left common carotid portals. I just want to show you this is kind of what we're going to be seeing as well. The interesting thing about this operation, though, is that this is going to be limited by, by this right here, by the, uh, the, the availability of normal or near-normal ascending aorta for the proximal zone zero landing zone. This is, this is the fundamental Achilles heel of these procedures. Uh, and that's why I, I think that, that the hybrid procedure or zone two or whatever we have, how we can think creatively is going to, make, is going to be a better operation. And this is just, I wanted to show the future. This is Iron Man. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, we're going we're gonna to see a few more pictures like this. Thank you very much.